Welcome back to the Balls Deep Podcast, Fantasy Six Pack. I'm your boy Bert here, aka Ficky Town, aka Mr. Smooth with the Groove. We've got Dave here, uh, Corporal Eddie. Dave, uh, Monday night, you're a Lions fan. I will give you five seconds. Let it out. Oh my God, dude. Like, okay, seriously. NFL officiating is absolutely a fucking joke. And I don't say often that the refs took a game away from somebody, but the refs straight fucking ass fucked us out of that game. I was hoping for like a fuck piss shit, but that that works as well. A, a fuck shit con ass bitch or something. Like, and, we, and we move on. It's good to be back. <laughs> uh, we missed a week out there. I was celebrating uh, on, on travel there. We had some, some holidays and some family obligations But it's good to be back, and we can assure that won't happen again. The schedule is there to all of our avid listeners uh, out there. And uh, it's good to be back in here, Dave. It's good to be good. It sucks about that game. But at least you picked up a a showdown win against me there, right? What's the – you're looking at 7-4 to year end on on these showdowns? Yeah, and that's taken out the couple of ones you were whining like a little girl about. Oh, 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 oh I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. When you're up seven four, you can talk shit, right? Oh, whining like a girl. I don't know what you're talking about there. I don't know. It's uh, <laughs> don't know what you're saying. But yeah, those are uh, the showdowns have been fun. Uh, I've not been going my way this uh, most recently. This last one was a uh, was a good one. Um, want to tell me what your thought process was there? Tell me your your lineup if you got that up, and we can kind of say I know you had a. Uh, Galladay as the captain, and that was really the differentiator there. I did not. I had my man Carry on Johnson. Carry on is the captain. Yes, sir. I kind of, I actually thought he was going to have a much better game um, than he did, but I mean, twenty-one and a half from the captain spot isn't terrible, I guess. Um, let's see, who do we share? Actually, it's funny. You and I had quite different lineups um, yeah, in the we, showdown. We shared two guys. Kind of hard to do. Yeah, we shared two guys. Um, we both had Stafford, not as the captain. I had Carrion as the captain. You just had him as a regular, regular old dude. But it was still pretty close. I only beat you by what six points. So, I mean, and we both had really wasn't, we know, both had Prater. Close. We both had ourselves some Matt uh, Prater there, who just of course, blew yeah, up. Tell you what the Lions' offense is going to make Matt Prater an MVP candidate with how many field goals they make him kick. <laughs> Love it. Love that for my season long. But let's dive right into it here. We've got an interesting Thursday night game coming up. A lot of people that could make their case to be chosen as your captain here. Uh, I really need to bring one back up. Uh, So let's go ahead and let's hear who your captain is for the Thursday night, and I'll see if mine is different. Yeah, so this is an interesting one, actually. Um, I definitely constructed the lineup for the Thursday showdown against you differently than I would do in in a big tournament. So there was four guys... Well, five guys that I really wanted to have, but I, I could only make four of them work. Um, so Cortland Sutton, uh, Patrick Mahomes, either Kelsey or Hill, and Philip Lindsay are the guys that I really, really wanted to have. But I, I couldn't make it work with Hill, so I had to go Kelsey. Um, and I actually, because I had to save some money, um, I went Cortland Sutton as my captain. So he comes in at 11-4. Uh, he was the cheapest of, of those four guys. Um, so Sutton's the captain. I got Mahomes to Kelsey. Um, I got Philip Lindsay because that KC run defense is terrible. And I, I could probably go out there and, and get at least 50 yards on the ground myself. What's, they what, what's your, game. what's your 40 um, there? Oh God. Probably about like, I don't know, seven. <laughs> <five. laughs> I don't know. It, I don't know, man. It's, it probably wouldn't be pretty. Um, but, uh, so that, yeah, so I got those four in there, and then, like I said, that that costs some money to get those guys in there. So um, normally I go with one kicker just because they're fairly cheap, but they have a nice floor. Um, in this case, I had to go both kickers, so um, I've got Bucker and McManus to round out my lineup. Very nice. And as you saw from from my lineup last time, there I went two kickers, and I almost uh, almost got it there. Almost. Yeah, I mean, sometimes I don't. I would never do it. Like I said, I would never do this in a tournament just because two kickers. You have such a low ceiling. Of course. But the, the floor is okay in a showdown, especially when I can get those four guys that I really wanted. Absolutely, absolutely. Uh, when it comes to my end here, 
uh, we're going to run out Philip Lindsay. Uh, that's going to be a differentiator there. So who's going to have the bigger game between us. It's, it's going to be Lindsay or Sutton. They're in both of our lineups, but I'm captaining Lindsay. They're captaining Sutton. I just think he's going to do it all. I think they'll likely be playing from behind. He's just been red hot as well. Uh, hopefully he ends up the highest scoring person of the game. I had tinkered around with Tyreek. I originally wanted to put him there. Uh, I just think that he's kind of back with a vengeance and Mahomes is getting the ball. But that offense has been a little, you know, they're missing some guys on the offensive line. Detroit's got a good defense. I I mean, not Detroit. Uh, Detroit does have a good defense, but that's completely irrelevant in this uh, <laughs> matchup. Uh, I just think, you know, that there's something up there. And if this is ever going to break out, it's going to be with Mahomes and Tyreek there. But we're going to, uh, we ended up taking Mahomes out of the lineup uh, in favor of uh, Joe Flacco. So we're going to ride Flacco there. Uh, Lindsey and the captain, Flacco, Sutton, Royce Freeman go with the two running backs on the same team there. Because if Denver's going to win the game, they're going to kind of have to grind it out and use those two running backs. We've got Tyreek and Harrison Butker on the uh, the Chiefs' end. So four Broncos, two Chiefs. Uh, if it comes to a tournament, uh, I might even be looking at a Royce Freeman captain game there. I think in terms of a, a massive tournament, he's someone who I'm favoring. Have Lindsey in there as well. No Flacco, maybe fit Mahomes and Tyreek on the other end there. That would be an interesting-looking lineup. Uh, it's been nice. Again, these captains, besides against you, these, uh, these showdowns have been pretty solid for me and the bankroll there. Again, we're just average Joes that are just playing it out. You know, We're by no means pros. But it's been given a it's been given a great way to look at these games and watch these games uh, as garbage as some of them have been and to uh, you know we're all degenerates so it's good to get some some action there so I really need to cut this back here so hopefully I come through on the Thursday Sunday and Monday night and I can even it up seven seven at by the time for our next podcast that would be a really good that would be a really good situation there so let's bounce up to Sunday. Uh, as per tradition, who's, uh, you know, looking at your, your lock of the week this week. And it's someone who I've been hearing his, his name spurred across the entire industry. He seems to be the hype of the week and, uh, you're going along with that. And, uh, tell me about little Leonard Fournette. Yeah, man, Leonard Fournette's going to destroy the Bengals this week. Um, I mean, I think he's going to have an ownership probably, you know, north of 30%. Um, but I don't, I don't see anyone that has a higher ceiling than he does this week. Um, he's almost a lock for 20 carries. Um, be, be shocked if he didn't get a hundred yards, um, with really going to be the difference for Fournette to see exactly how big he goes off is just going to be how many touchdowns he scores. So, you know, if he gets three or four touchdowns, let's say, I mean, he's going to be so much worth all that chalk. Um, if he only gets in the end zone, let's say one time. Uh, you know that that would kind of suck. So um, he's going to be so chalky that you got to hope for a big game. But, but Leonard Ford- I can't see really see him in the majority of my lineups. It's- Leonard Fournette's never let anyone down before, right? Uh, no, I don't believe so. I, I, as a matter of fact, I had a kitten um, stuck in a tree yesterday, and I texted Leonard Fournette, and he was here in like four hours, and got took care of it for me. <laughs> So coming in at the sixth highest price running back in a dream matchup versus the Bengals. Again, they should just run amok. I feel like that's one of those where it's just, hey, it's just it's going to happen for him. The talent's there. He's been really good recently. Even if, you know, any way you look at it, whether it's matchup or even if you're just game log checking and looking at his recents, Fournette just had a, a great floor uh, he's one of the few workhorse backs and the amount of times he touches the ball and it's, uh, it's a no brainer. I, I agree on that. A, a no brainer cash games, uh, single entry tournaments, uh, all in on Leonard there. Uh, my end, we're going to go with another running back who, uh, came through for us in, in one of our lineups a couple weeks ago. Someone I've been a big fan of coming off of a buy and priced absurdly low. Like, makes zero sense how low this guy's priced. He's the focal point of an offense. He's got a a solid matchup when it comes to uh, what the other defense is is good at. And that Packers defense, not that great stopping the run. And that's Josh Jacobs. 
I think that Oakland's starting to find a groove, and John Gruden's starting to kind of find and build this identity here. I think Antonio Brown's thing has really brought them closer as a team, as a unit. And Josh Jacobs, oh my gosh, Dave, this kid is a stud. Have you been able to watch a bunch of him play? I know it's Oakland. I mean, I mean, I know it's uh, Oakland, and it's not really like a team you're going to go out of your way and watch, but this kid is unbelievable. Yeah, I mean, I've seen him on red zone a little bit. Um, haven't, you know, actually watched a, a full game or anything like that. But, um, yeah, he he seems to be one of those guys that is, you know, remaining fairly low in salary. Um, so, yeah, I mean, he's, a, he's definitely a good play this week. It makes absolute zero sense to me. He is the unquestioned workhorse on the team. Uh, last two games, at 17 and 26 carries, respectfully. Um, just coming off a beatdown of the Bears, and they've been saying that they want to catch it. They want to get him starting to catch the ball, and it hasn't really happened yet. He maybe had, he had two catches the last game. Uh, it could be slowly and surely coming on. He's the focal point of the offense. He's someone who's going to be in my lineups 100% of the time, no matter the format, uh, no matter the the estimated ownership. And he's just a he's just a stud. He's my my Fink Town lock of the week. Fire Josh Jacobs into your lineup. Uh, so speaking of firing guys into your lineup here, who you else are you kind of building around? So if you want to go ahead, maybe give me, uh, you know, you already talked about Fournette. Uh, I see you, you like you some Josh Jacobs as well in your, in your lineup, mm -hmm. just based on, on price, um, and, uh, and the low ownership. Uh, who else are you liking? Give me, maybe give me someone at each position, uh, your quarterback who you say is going to be uh, your most used quarterback not somebody I agree with here, and that's uh, that's Jared Goff. How come you're feeling Mr. Goff this week? Um, I'm feeling Mr. Goff because my, my five-year-old kid could probably put up three touchdowns against the Falcons' uh, defense. So I think Jared Goff's slightly better than he is. Um, so I, I, I kind of had been on the – well, we both have been on the Cardinals, you know, bandwagon as far as, you know, running everyone and their mom out there against the Cardinals. But it's – kind of turned it into the Falcons um, yeah. show now. And when you've got a team that has three Pro Bowl caliber receivers, you know, I'll, I'll take my chances, especially going against Atlanta. So, yeah, Goff is definitely the quarterback I'm going to run out there the most. Only issue for me is you don't necessarily know which of those three receivers is going to go crazy. So, um, you know, you're going to have to – I'm going to have to have a mixture of them. Um but Cooper Cup is going to be my number one share as far as those receivers go. Um, I don't. I don't know. I, I would assume that golf is going to be one of the you know top two highest owned quarterbacks. It just seems so obvious. But I think that you know again his ceiling is so high this week that I kind of have to go with him. Um, like I, said, I got Fournette and Jacobs at running back. Again, they they're just two fairly obvious plays. And then tight end, I. I I kind of went back and forth a little bit. Um, I'm actually I, like my like my heart says Evan Ingram because it just makes a ton of sense, and I think that's where a lot of people are going to go. But I actually really like Mark Andrews this week. I, I think between him and Ingram, they're going to be the two total chalk tight ends. Um, but I I just I like Andrews um, better this week, and then defensively, I think two teams are probably going to be you know vastly owned i think it's going to be the niners and the bills i actually like the bills a little bit better just because of their matchup um i know that the 49ers have a really good matchup as well but i think that that the bills are in a little better shape um against the dolphins i like it although fitz magic can oh, there's always a chance of fitz magic working his magic there uh yeah, he might throw six picks too so he, take I'll take my chances. He very well might. And speaking of that game, my quarterback, you know, I mentioned I wasn't a big fan of Jared Goff. I want to tell you why. Um, one, that offensive line has been an abomination. Uh, Jalen Ramsey can't play left tackle, can he? I don't think that's uh, part of his contract. That might be part of his extension. I don't know. Uh, but they just can't really protect him. And the Rams have just looked like uh, they've just looked out of it. Um Goff is uh, really dependent on McVay and his play calling. And while the matchup is unreal, and I 
completely agree. Atlanta is looking like the new Arizona with that, especially with Patrick Peterson coming back. Um, I just, right, exactly. you know, I, I think, you know, Atlanta, you know, Matt Ryan on the other end has given him a lot of opportunities to throw. But I just, I don't think Jared Goff is very good. And I always get a little concerned when a quarterback who I don't think is that great is the is going to be a, a chalk play. I think people are going to be going back to the well there. Um after a future performance and going into the matchup, uh, I, I might get some action on one of his receivers, as I do like Brandon Cooks this week. He let me down last, but I like going back to it, and I think he's due for maybe a big play, and it would keep me somewhat involved in that game. But I can just, I see myself going elsewhere there. My quarterback of the week is Josh Allen, and I see him being my quarterback for the next couple of weeks based on schedule. Um, I think that he'll be higher owned, but this could be one of those situations where he's a lot lower owned than I think. Maybe it's because I'm so high on him. Uh, he's priced way too low with an insane matchup and his ability to run over just that hapless Miami defense. I just think it's going to be money in the bank. Trying not to get too complicated this week. There's a lot of great options, and he's the, the guy where I'm just uh, I'm putting him in, in pen, and we're going to design around him. Uh, at the running back spot, again, I'm all in on Josh Jacobs, as I mentioned before, so I don't need to go any more to that. I'm all in on Fournette. Uh, I also am going to go uh, back to the Derrick Henry well. Uh, you know, as I mentioned, I play one $100 single bullet entry uh, on DraftKings, and I got off to a great start on Sunday uh, with thanks to a Kirk Cousins, Adam Thielen, Stephon Diggs, Stack, as well as Terry McLaurin, who just seemed like a no-brainer with Case Keenum back in action. And then I had a chance to kind of tinker with my lineup a little bit. My remaining players were the Titans defense, Derrick Henry, Le'Veon Bell, and Brandon Cooks. I knew I should have taken Cooks out for Lindsay, but no one really busted out in those 4 o'clock games. I ended up barely cashing, but that could have been my chance to really really take it home and have my first big win of the season, which has yet to come. Um, but we're going to go back to Derrick Henry well, because I say this every week, he is going to have a monster game at some point, and he will be in my lineup when that happens. I'm just going to keep riding with him. I would like when he's facing a team that's got a red number next to his matchup on DraftKings because that tends to scare away the public for a bit. And uh, I think that they might get a little jolt here with, with Ryan Tannehill, at quarterback. I think they might have to respect the pass. They complete a couple passes, and then they let Henry do his thing with 20 to 25 touches, maybe get two scores, and uh, Burt laughs to the green. So we're going to go with a combination of Henry, Jacobs, and Fournette at the running back, probably in the flex. At wide receiver, we're going to pair up Josh Allen with John Brown. It's an easy call if I'm expecting a, a you know, big big toss there. And then tight end, as I, I mentioned every episode, Evan Ingram is my guy. And until he's priced up as the top tight end in fantasy, along with Travis Kelsey, I will be using him. Uh, he, he's almost there. He's up to like the 6,500 this week, which is a ton. Uh, Austin Hooper just blew up Arizona against tight ends. It's the easiest, biggest lock in the fantasy game that we play right now. Uh, his cost starting week one, week two, 52, 152, 57, 58. Now he's up to 65. They might have given it a boost just based on matchup and what's been happening. I don't care. We are rocking with Evan Engram and we're not even thinking twice about it. Uh, so we're going to, we're going to put him in there, but I will create a lineup in the, the smaller Entry, bigger tournament. Uh, to complete the stack, we're going to go with a little Doss Knox to go with uh, to go with Josh Allen and John Brown. So I'm looking forward to that. Another running back I like, too, is a little Marlon Mack. The Colts want to run the ball. That's how they win. And he's just really good behind a stud offensive line there. So uh, I told you I'm fading Jared Goff, and I just have no interest in playing him. Who is the quarterback that you just look at it and say, no thanks? Well, I'm actually going to, like I said, this is just a complete 180 from, from normal here um, for, for me. And I'm fading Daniel Jones. Not that I've been a big Daniel Jones fan, but I've been a huge fan of. You've been pushing him a little bit. Against the Arizona defense. Ah. Um, so I could see 
Jones having a pretty nice ownership um, just just because of the matchup. Um, I think he's I think he's going to be like a top five owned quarterback, probably coming in you know seven somewhere seven to ten percent. And I don't trust him. Um, I don't trust him against Arizona. So Daniel Jones is going to be the guy that I think is going to be fairly well owned that I'm not going to touch. Oh, got it. Very nice. And uh, we both have the same wide receiver where we're just going to completely avoid due to lack of faith. He had a big game last week uh, in Terry McLaurin. Pretty self-explanatory here, I guess. Stay away from the Niners' defense. Because he's priced pretty high. He's priced as one of the top wide receivers on the board. Yeah, um, I mean, it, it's it's straight up a matchup thing. So, um, you know, McLaurin and and Keenum, um, you know, are pretty good tandem. Uh, 6,100 is a little much for me to, to start him against the Niners. Um, I mean, he's been a absolute stud um kind of out of nowhere so yeah he's definitely one of those guys where i I, i'm afraid that people might pay for him a little bit um just because you know he has you know been so on fire but and you see exactly what the the niners did to a you know superior offense compared to washington um i I mean if i had to start a, a redskins receiver it would probably be like Paul Richardson, um, just because I, I I don't see a reason why they wouldn't try to shut McLaurin down and you know make somebody else beat them. Yeah, but if you're not starting McLaurin, you're not starting a Redskins receiver. I well, like I said, if I if I had to go contrarian or something and I wanted to save money and I mean you could talk me into Paul Richardson, I I suppose. I mean I'm not advocating for him at all, but. You know, if you, if you made me start a Washington receiver, that's where I would go, actually. Yeah, he's, uh, I'm looking at stats from week two, 3,800 in week two to 52, 51 to 6,000 last week. And, you know, I think, you know, the fact that it is his rookie year, he's kind of doing it and a good defense, I, I'm actually starting to lean to think he could be a nice tournament play. Uh, especially with Keenum, because he has been that good. I think the ownership will be down. The fact that we're so easy to dismiss him, and the fact that he was on on my list of do not play, I might even uh, I might even have to might even pivot to that as you know thinking out loud, and he could be a nice little nice little contrarian bit. Speak. It's just tough. I mean, you're, you know, for, I don't like to play a contrarian at such a cost. You know. Mm-hmm. I agree, but again, they should be down. This game, they should have to throw a lot, and mm-hmm. when he's played with Case Keenum, he's been an absolute stud. So I think he could be a nice percentage play as a number one option on, on that team. And speaking of contrarian plays and maybe sneaky plays, want to go ahead and give me a little bit of a uh, one person at each position who you think is going to be uh, overlooked by the masses? Yeah, so I actually think that um, Jimmy G is a, is a decent um, sneaky quarterback play this week. Um, salary wise, you know, he's, he's going to be just inside the top 10. So not like crazy cheap, but definitely not expensive. Um, projected ownership is going to be somewhere around like 2%. So like, I don't know, no one's going to really be owning him. Um, so, you know, you're, you're getting a, a top 10 kind of guy at a, you know, probably top 10 or bottom 10 as far as ownership is concerned. So, um, you know, that, that's kind of a sneaky play. At the same time, you get, you know, someone that is a quality player. It's owned at 2%. I think you're doing good, especially when they're playing a terrible team. Um, Carlos Hyde is another guy. He's only 4,700. And somehow he's managed back-to-back weeks where he's had 20-plus carries. So I think that's a really good price for him. Uh, projection for ownership is just a little bit over 2%. So, again, you know, you're, you're getting a guy in a pretty good situation who – you know, has been getting the rock lately. I'm not buying that projection. I'm not no. buying that projection. I think he's going to be higher owned than you think based on the price. And he's he's the guy in Houston. And they're projected to have a nice, uh, you know, they got a nice projecting that week. And I think he's going to be closer to the, the 10 plus percent range just because he, he's, been, find out, he's been getting it done. That's one of the things that we can kind of uh, keep track mm-hmm. of there. Yeah, he- he was a guy that I, I, I refused to touch last week. Um, and now, like I said, with, with another 20-carry game, um, you know, I, 
he's a guy that that I could see sliding in there every now and again. It's gonna be hard because I'm gonna be doing so much Fournette and Jacobs, um, but he'll be a guy I'll slide in there. Um, I think a, a really good one potentially um, is Mike Williams, um, the Chargers wide receiver. He's so cheap. Six hundred isn't bad. He is um, cheap. He, yeah, he is pretty cheap. You know what shocks me is he's actually led the team in targets the last two weeks. So he's gotten more targets than Keenan Allen the last two weeks. Um, does face a tough defense though, so I'm sure that has a little bit to do with the salary. Um, Titans are, you know, obviously a pretty solid defense. Uh, odds are that, you know, well, not odds are that game's not going to be a shootout. So what the uh, heck is up with the Chargers? Him being the highest scoring receiver. Uh, yeah, that game last week was funky, wasn't it? I, uh, I, I don't know what I don't know, man. That was that was a weird one. Chargers going to um, charge her, I guess. Yeah, I, I, I don't know. Like, you know, I I just see, you know, teams continuing to completely focus on Keenan Allen because, you know, dude's a top five wide receiver talent in the league. And so that's going to open up a little more room and, you know, a little bit more touches for Williams like he's been getting. And I definitely see him being a guy that's somewhere around 1% owned. So I think that the, the ceiling there for the cost and for a contrarian play is a guy that I'm probably going to put in quite a few lineups and it might bite me in the ass, but if it doesn't, that's going to be one of those things where you could look back and say, hey, that money I saved on Mike Williams and the 30 points he gave me is why I won X number of dollars, you know? Very nice. I think that's um, I think that's going to be a – I think Mike Williams is going to be a great play there and I might have to see if I can fit him into yeah, some of my can, into some of my lives there. Probably. Absolutely. Um, wasn't even going to ask permission. Yeah. I'll, I'll skip the defense because defense is stupid. But um, long story short, um, if I had a roll with a sneaky defense, I'd go with the Dolphins, the cheapest one on the slate. Um, but tight end-wise, this may be a homer pick because I've gone to this well a few times, and it's it's paid off once but but not since. Um, I, I kind of like, I think, TJ Hawkinson a little bit this week. Um, oh, you, wait, you, you like TJ Hawkinson? No way. Yeah, I know. Crazy, right? Go figure. But, you know, 10 targets over the last two games, which isn't a ton, um, but, but he did come off an injury last week. Um, and even after that, he was second in targets to Galladay. And, you know, even with the numbers as they sit right now, um, Hawkinson is the, the eighth highest scoring tight end, which isn't fabulous, but he dropped a touchdown last week. A couple weeks ago, he had a touchdown taken away on replay that was a touchdown. If you throw those two touchdowns in there, don't even count the receptions or, or, the, or the yards. He's he's right up into the top five for for you know scoring tight ends. Interesting. So thirty six hundred dollars. He's not going to blow up. You know he's not going to be a guy that gets you two hundred yards and you know two touchdowns more than likely. But thirty six hundred dollars. He's a really nice contrarian play. Um, you know if you don't want to go with you know any of the big boys, the, the couple of big boys at tight end. So. I think all these sneaky little tournament plays that I've got in here this week, I, I wouldn't play more than one of them mm-hmm. in any given lineup. But I think all three of them are, I mean, Hyde maybe not so much, but definitely Jimmy G, Williams, and Hawkinson all could be real big difference makers if they if they hit. Gotcha. Well, everyone's going to be a difference maker if they hit. I just saw, and I went Zach Gertz this last week as a Hooper fade. Like, as my comeback from my Viking stack, um, along with Alshon, uh, Ertz had his worst game of the season. I'm just not going to go near the Vikings t- against the tight end. Um, on my end, I'm going to make this short and sweet before we get to uh, the balls deep lineup of the week. Um, I like the, as much as I like Derrick Henry, I could like a little Ryan Tannehill, Corey Davis, uh, and A.J. Brown stack. Call me crazy. Uh, but again, teams just get a little jolt when they have a new quarterback. Um, you know, when it comes down to Corey Davis, fool me once, shame on, on you, fool me 502 times, shame on me. Uh, I think this game could possibly shoot out. I think Tannehill's got something to prove. He was kind of dusting the wind in Miami there. He's getting an opportunity to do his thing. He's cheap. Um, and Corey Davis and AJ Brown, they're good. They're good wide receivers. So, uh, in the lineup, I don't have Derrick Henry. I could see myself going with a Tannehill, Davis, A.J. Brown, you know, specifically in the $3 entry and, like, the low-dollar, high-field tournaments where it's just like, all right, 
fuck it, you know? So you can kind of play some of the Chalk, you can play the Engram, you can play the Fournette, the Jacobs, and then uh, still have some time to get creative and throw in other studs to complete that lineup. So, And the one, just crazy, 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 do not play this guy in your lineup. Please do not play in your lineup. I just, I just want to say it. Because if I go to sleep with it, it just, you know, I just need to get it off my chest. 99.9% .9 chance, zero shot of anything happening. But Chris Thompson's a little hurt, even though the Niners have a good defense. Wendell Smallwood might get some touches. And there, a Adrian Peterson tweaked Hammy in the first quarter away from Smallwood being a feature back on a team that wants to run the ball. I'm going to do one entry in the $3 mega tournament with Wendell Smallwood in it just because I feel like donating to DraftKings and all the hard work that they do over there. I just want to say it. I just want to get that out on the airwaves there um, just because Smallwood, why the hell not? Let's go ahead and build our lineup here. So uh, last time, two weeks ago, we finally cashed and Dave and I are able to retire. Uh, the $3 entry with, with our lineup there brought back five dollars a good uh what is it 1.66 percent of our of the buy-in there so uh congratulations to you there dave that was really good no it was awesome dude i was <laughs> sharing that ballpark frank with you with our winnings and it's a shame too we uh so we had fuller in there who blew up uh we had josh jacobs in there remember i i was dead on on jacobs he was owned by 1.3 percent for 32 points against Chicago. That was my call of the week. It came through, but yeah. we were let down. I don't remember you even talking about that. That's weird. I don't I don't recall that at all. <laughs> we we got fucked by my Eagle stack. Ertz was okay at 6.5%. It was 16 and a half. Zeke let us down, owned by 25% of the massive field, uh, only getting 17.1. Uh, we chose the wrong quarterback. We ch we, uh, I chose the wrong quarterback. Carson against the Jets, he did not have to do much, only 12 fantasy points. Uh, we had Cortland Sutton in our flex. He had a great game, uh, four for 92 and a touch for 19. We had the Pats D, um, and we had Alden Tate. He was still 25%, but he paid off his minimum price, 11.6 fantasy points. We also got let down by Julio. The worst feeling is to hit your, your low ownership guys and your low cost guys, and then guys like Zeke and Julio just flat out let you down. So that one could have been uh, could have been nice. We finished in 117,221st place out of the field. So our best score to date, we put up a 186.86. Let's go ahead and try and beat this here. Again, we're making trying to get a little off the rail here. Uh, we played the no-brainers. You know, we knew Fuller was just going to go off. We didn't know it was going to be that big. Uh, but who are we locking in to start here? Because I want to stay away from a 25%er. So think about it. If Zeke was 25% that week against Green Bay with that matchup, Fournette's going to be 30 So in the $3 one, I would prefer not to play him. But oh, can, yeah. can we go back to the Josh Jacobs will? Yep, that's good. So let's go with yeah. Jacobs here. Let's get that that running back in. Who's someone who you know off the wall? You just you want to get in this one here because again we're trying to take first place. Oh, I know that's where it gets kind of tricky. Um, I tell you what, um, you want to lock Mike Williams in for forty six yeah, at receiver. Let's do it. I think that's a sneaky little. Well, obviously I think that's a sneaky little play. Um, and then I think we probably should just pick a quarterback right now so we can match him up with either a tight end or a receiver. I'm going to push hard for my guy. I'm going to so push hard for my Allen guy. Allen Brown? I would, Allen love, Brown? I would love to go Allen Brown. You don't think Allen's going to be too chalky, though? No. Okay. Uh, even even so, I think it's just such a it's such a blow-up spot where I think he's going to get at least 25 points, and that's what you're looking for in a quarterback here, especially no, at his I, price. I, no I don't think he's going to be one of the top, top, top quarterbacks. So I think he's got still... potential to blow QB1 out of the water this week. He had proven to do it before. It's not like you're projecting something where, you know, oh, I think he could be a QB1 on the slate. He did it multiple times last year, and this is the match to do so, coming after a bye. Uh, and you know he's gonna get, you know, he's gonna sneak in, you know, twenty twenty five yards minimum rushing too. So you know you kind of add the, 
you know, it kind of his rushing yards will take away from the interception that he throws. Absolutely. And again, I've, that's all factored in there to the, the possible mm-hmm. pick. Uh, but I think that he's just the, the no brainer play of the week. And uh, since we cashed the last one where I chose the quarterback, even though I chose the quarterback wrong, we're going to, you know, we're going to ride with it there. So we've got Jacob, we got Josh Allen, Josh Jacobs. Uh, we could also just go for a full Josh lineup. Um, <laughs> that would be an interesting one, but I don't know if there's enough players to do I don't know. so. We got lots of J's. We got Josh, Josh, Josh. John. <laughs> John, yep. Mike. Um, yeah. Four letter, four letter names. So right now, we're looking at an average remaining salary of fifty six eighty to go. Let's get a defense. And I, and I know you want to go Ingram, right? Uh, I, I have no problem with sliding him in unless you want to save money and, and go with for the boy Andrews. For the three dollar one here, since we're going you want to go a little crazy. Since we're going Allen and Brown, I say fuck it and we go with Dawson Knox. Hmm, let me. We're shooting for the stars here, you know. Dawson Knox. He, Let's throw it in there and see what happens. He is cheap at 3300 mm-hmm. Just a cake matchup, and the dude is good, man. The guy's a player okay. coming out of a bye, um, you know, the last two games. Even since we had these, you know, four targets, four targets, three targets, five targets. Uh, Miami stinks. Uh, two of the last three games, he had at least eight fantasy points. All he needs is about nine to pay off value here. And since we're going for gold and we've already got the stack, uh, I think it's a, a solid pivot there. So let's That's okay. I, I don't mind that. Let's fill in Knox and let's get a defense special team and then figure out which studs we want to complete the rest of our lineup here. All so. right. So defense special teams. I think we have. I think we have three choices. I think I know where you're going to go. Um, I don't think we necessarily need to save the money on the defense. So I think the Dolphins. We probably could. Well, we have to punt the Dolphins because we got all the Bills stacked. My bad. So mm-hmm. forget that. San so Fran. We can either double up on the Bills or we could go San Francisco. Let's just go San Fran. They've been sturdy. Okay, I like it. I, I like not putting the Bills in with the Bills stack anyway. I agree. I agree with that as well. Now we're loaded with seven grand. On, S- a piece on these three. Seven spots. grand a piece. Uh, so it comes down to all right. Who's you know our favorite pick? I think this is contrarian okay. enough where we can go for net. I think we can put Fournette in there. Uh, Let's see what it looks like. So he's put Fournette in there. And see. Fournette. So that's literally our average. So Seven thousand on the dot. Um, we need a wide receiver and a flex. Um, we've got oh, Saquon could be a move. Saquon will be back in action. Almost nine thousand. Um, that scares me. Definitely scares me, but I think he's going to be low ownership, and I think that he's. He's not going to play if he's not healthy, and he is the offense, and it could be a nice pivot from Engram uh, in terms of the offensive production. Yeah. Let's just see who comes available. Is, yeah, it looks like I mean, it looks like the ownership projection for him is six point eight percent. So I mean, you'll never get Saquon Barkley lower than that. And what um, and what should be a shootout? That could, that could be exa- exactly that could be a shootout. Let's throw him in the flex then, and that leaves us with fifty one hundred. I'll go from top to bottom, and one of these guys I put in my notes, but I did not get to talk about him. I know, and I actually have a different pick. So I know who you're going to say, and I've got a guy that's right below him. Okay, so I was thinking Marvin Jones. You're thinking Geronimo Allison or D.D. Westbrook? I'm thinking Metcalf, D.J. Metcalf. Oh, D little D.K. action to kind of go away. You like Lockett. I mean, you like... uh, Russ. Wilson and um, Lockett are going to be highly owned. Not like super. Well, yeah, they're going to be highly owned this week. And I think Metcalf is a really sneaky pivot. Sold. Of a guy who could go big. Sold. And I don't think he's going to be highly owned. Sold. So we're going with Josh Allen, Josh Jacobs, Leonard Fournette, John Brown, Mike Williams, DK Metcalf, Dawson Knox, Saquon Barkley, and the 49ers defense. Uh, this is one of those ways where, you know, if we're expecting a shootout and then being up a lot, I usually like to get a uh, someone on the other team, but the Dolphins are so bad, I don't even think that's necessary. That if, would be hard, yeah. And Buffalo's got a good defense too. I just think we're fine not even touching that. Uh, this is a funky little lineup that, uh, you know, why not? Uh, the Saquon part is interesting. Saquon, DK, you could go two better studs, but hey, Say you know, Saquon goes off, he goes off. 
So that could be a good one. Another option. Yeah, this, I think this lineup is this lineup is going to come down to Williams and Knox. Yeah. It, if for some reason, if for some reason both of those guys score twenty points or more, I think this lineup is exactly what we're trying to do, and that's you know not get not another hot dog. And, you know, double our money. Exactly. We're not trying to get a hot dog here. Um, you know, we're, we're trying to get the whole ballpark. So. We're trying to get the whole um, ballpark. I like it. And I'm, I'm definitely, you know, I really like this core. Uh, so, again, when I make my laps, I'm going to be going a lot of Allen, uh, Brown. And I'm going to play a bunch with, with Dawson. So, in my one big, uh, my $100 single entry, I won't have Dawson. I'll have Engram in there. But for the three dollar ones, I think I might have Dawson Knox as my constant tight end, and then play around with uh, like that Saquon slot, that DK slot, and you know maybe keep, I'll probably keep Mike Williams, and then I, I like Mike Williams if I go with a uh, a Titans passing stack to kind of stack that game would be a bit of a weird stack that I think will be very underused but still with decent potential. Yeah, so. I almost hate to even say Mike Williams out loud because. I really think that that has the potential to be a really good play this week. Not that he's going to be the, like I said, he's not going to be the top scoring receiver, but at his price, I think that he's, he's just been sturdy. Be a, a maker, 13 yeah. targets, 10 targets the last two games of uh, right. coming from 13.4 and 12.2 fantasy points. He has not gotten the end zone yet. Uh, exactly. I, he I easily could put up two red zone touchdowns with the and blink of an eye. I like it. I've been a, a personal victim of Mike Williams' monster game in the fantasy playoffs, and it's uh you know it can happen. So I, I like it. I really like this. I think I want to play a lot of Mike Williams as well as a, my cheap wide receiver, and let's uh, let's cross our fingers. Yes, sir. Any parting words before we wrap this up? Um, if there are any young kids out there who have any aspirations to be NFL officials, um, if you give me your name and contact information, I'll <laughs> personally forward it to the fucking NFL. Um, as long as you, you know, have vision enough that you can see your hand in front of your face, I'd say you're pretty well qualified. Love it. And I am beginning to drink now for Sunday night football, Eagles, Cowboys. Uh, we're pumped. So hopefully I'm feeling Better than you are after my primetime game. So, uh, I hope so too, bud. For my guy Dave, I'm Bert. Thanks for listening and uh, send the balls deep out there.